Since grabbing power in a coup in February 2021, the Myanmar junta has been fighting an ever-widening civil war against the ethnic armed groups and the pro-democracy protesters across Myanmar. Now, struggling to crush the widespread opposition, the embattled junta, despite dissent, is pressing ahead with military conscription that now includes the young Rohingyas. In the western Rakhine state, an ethnic armed group, the Arakan army, claims to have taken control of all junta military bases around Buthidong as well as the town itself. But in a disturbing turn of events, the Arakan army soldiers have resorted to widespread arson and looting of Rohingya homes in Buthidong. As many as about 200,000 Rohingya have had to flee from their homes to escape the fires, besides an unconfirmed number of people who were also killed in this violence. So what is happening in the civil war in Myanmar? Our next poll gets more details. The Rohingyas in the southeast nation of Myanmar have long suffered mass atrocities and forced displacement perpetrated by the Myanmar military. Many, including UN experts, consider the horrendous atrocities to be genocide against the Muslim majority community. An estimated 45,000 Rohingya have reportedly fled to an area on the Naf River near the border with Bangladesh, seeking protection. Now they are trapped on the front lines of Myanmar's civil war. In the western Rakhine state, the Arakan army, a powerful ethnic armed group battling Myanmar's junta, has seized a predominantly Rohingya town close to the Bangladesh border. A weekend of widespread arson attacks and looting by the Arakan army soldiers has resulted in the displacement of nearly 200,000 people. Reportedly, at 9.30pm local time on May 17th, the Arakan army soldiers entered the Butidong town and shortly after began torching homes. Additionally, phones were confiscated and threats issued to kill anyone trying to contact any family abroad. Junta airstrikes and artillery had also hit Butidong that day. Given the junta imposed internet and telecoms blackout, it is difficult to verify precisely what is unfolding. The Arakan army has denied torching the town and instead blames the Myanmar military, along with allied Rohingya militant groups, which it refers to as Bengali terrorists, of destroying Butidong. The violence echoes ruthless attacks on the stateless Rohingya community in 2016 and 2017 when the Myanmar's military had launched a brutal campaign of killing, rape and arson. The vicious campaign is currently subject to a genocide investigation at the International Court of Justice. Hundreds of thousands fled the military's clearance operations, making perilous boat journeys, choosing to risk their lives at sea over enduring inhumane conditions at home. An estimated one million Rohingya people now live in what is widely believed to be the world's largest refugee camp in Bangladesh. In the sprawling Bangladesh camps also, there isn't much respite for them given the escalating gang violence besides the struggle for food, clean water and hygienic conditions. The ration is not enough for us. We can't work outside the camp either if we want to earn more since the police will arrest us if we go outside. The conditions inside the camps are also not safe. There is no security both inside and outside the camp for us. If I had enough money, I would have gone with my family to Indonesia or Malaysia by now. Many who stayed back in Myanmar endure apartheid-like conditions and face severe restrictions on their movement, education and healthcare. More than 100,000 Rohingya people have been kept in squalid displacement camps by the military and the government in the Rakhine state capital for the past decade. Given the worsening human rights emergency in Myanmar, experts are of the opinion that Rohingyas are again at risk of genocide. The burgeoning humanitarian crisis due to violence in the Rakhine state has sparked a flurry of condemnations from the international community and human rights groups. But will it be enough to ensure that these crimes are not repeated?